of other things as well. Uh, yes, and I'm going to try to explain Chinese medicine slash acupuncture in 20 minutes uh, in Western terms. It's a daunting task, but I think I'm up for it. So, yeah, so acupuncture is widely lauded for its ability to control pain, but it's also very good for many other health conditions. Uh, the World Health Organization in 2003 recognized acupuncture as uh, being proven to work for 31 conditions. And then there were 63 conditions which had shown to be effective, but they just wanted to get some further proof before they throw it into the official list. So, but even knowing that, why is it that some people don't consider acupuncture to, for their health concerns, especially when sometimes it'll work when other modalities won't? Uh, yes, so why, aside from a deathly fear of needles, <laughs> legitimate. Um, and I think the problem is there's just a lack of understanding of why it works and how it works. Consequently, I'm not going to be talking too much about in terms of Chinese medical diagnosis or using Chinese medical terms, because if I talk, start talking about spleen dampete and liver yang rising, your eyes are going to roll back so hard you're going to see your own brain. <laughs> see it happen, it's not pretty. So, um, yeah, it's another language. Chinese medicine is another language, and that's why it takes four years to get through Chinese medical school. So you go in, you think, you feel like you can communicate well, and then you come out and nobody understands you. Um, you're like, what? You don't understand wind cold? What do you mean? That's, how we, that's what we call it. a cold. It's a wind cold, and we have also wind heat. Um, so um, it doesn't also help that, so it doesn't help that we're, so we're not translating is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it doesn't help that anytime there's a segment on the news, you get kind of the same basic blur. Uh, it's like acupuncture is based on the concept of chi, a vital life energy that flows through channels in the body called meridians. And when this chi is blocked, disease results. And acupuncture helps restore the free flow of energy to bring health and vitality back to the patient. Um, I'm not discounting that. I, I'm all on board with that. Uh, the problem is whether you find that fascinating and really cool, or you're a skeptic and you think that's really lame, you just don't get any further information on the subject. So we wanna, I want to delve a little deeper into that. So let's take the concept of qi. It's probably one of the most elusive concepts in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. So in, in Chinese medicine, we actually have many types of qi. We have, uh, for example, there's three of them. We have, we have gu qi, which we get from our food. We have zong qi, which we get from the air. And then those combine to form zhen qi. So, so let's translate that into, into Western terms. Okay, you take a molecule of glucose. You split it in half, you get two molecules of pyruvate. You throw that in the citric acid cycle to yield high-powered electrons. Throw that in the citric acid into the, sorry, the electric transport chain, combine it with oxygen to get adenosine triphosphate, ATP, which is the, cellular, the energetic currency our cells use for everyday living, for everyday tasks. <coughs> or we could just say the Gucci plus the Zongqi equals the Zhenqi. Okay? <laughs> they were saying the same things as the Chinese knew about it 4,000 years earlier somehow. Okay. So, we run on electricity. Our, our cells are constantly pumping sodium and potassium, producing electrical gradient. That's how a battery works. Our hearts produce electricity. Our brains produce electricity. Otherwise, brain and heart monitors would have nothing to monitor. Our cells are, are sorry, our nerves are insulated to provide higher electrical conductivity. So we, so the idea of energy doesn't seem so kind of out there anymore. So what do we do with this electricity? What do we do with this energy? I think we should call it electricity chi. Um, <laughs> I know it's a groaner, but I still like it. Just, uh, so, so let's say, for example, internal medicine. Let's say we have a heart issue. Well, one of the points you might want to use, I know this is a very small model, but we might want to use points along the bladder meridian. And that kind of starts right here, goes over the head, down the back, and ends at the pinky toe on the lateral side of the foot. Now it's called the bladder meridian. Some of you get hung up on these, these, these names. It's called the bladder meridian. Uh, 
It's kind of the same way there's a Santa Monica freeway. Okay, it gets you to Santa Monica, it gets you out of Santa Monica, and connects you to other freeways and gets other cities. So it's kind of the same thing with the channels. But along the bladder meridian, these back shoe points, these are master points for the organs. Bladder 15, for example, is on the level of the fifth thoracic vertebrae, about an inch and a half away from the spine. And that is the back shoe of the heart. So if you have problems with your heart, that'll help boost some, some function there. Now that might seem a little weird until you look at a Western medical chart and see where these spinal nerves innervate the internal organs. And you'll find that they're very similar. So that's just one way. Now let's take, some, take for example, something like plantar fasciitis. Okay, very difficult to treat in Western medicine, but no pun intended, they walk in the park for Chinese medicine, provided that you're using the proper technique. So, one thing people don't realize is that acupuncture is not monolithic. There's not just one type of acupuncture that we're all practicing. I mean, there is Dr. Dong style, Tan style, Akano style, Choreo style, turtle style abdominal acupuncture, Yamato scalp acupuncture, Zhu scalp acupuncture. It kind of goes on and on. And each kind of have their own place where you would use them for. Um, you know, the term traditional Chinese medicine is a bit of a misnomer because that is a system that was codified by the communists. They, what they did is they took different types of classical Chinese medicine and basically turned it into a curriculum so they could teach a large group of people. So getting back to plantar fasciitis, the type of style you might want to use is from the Master Dong system. And so what we do is we take, so if your left heel is problematic, we put needles into the palm of the right hand. Now that might seem, yeah, it might seem a little weird. What does my right palm have to do with my left heel? Well, if you don't think that has anything to do with each other, then you must walk like this. <laughs> right? No, we, have, we, we walk like this, right? There is a neurological connection between our hand and our foot that's crisscrossing. If you, don't, you know, if you don't think so, then you know, take a look at stroke patients and see that they don't walk so well because the, uh, the neurological connections have been compromised. So another, um, another thing acupuncture is very good for, stress. I think stress is a terrible name for what it is. I think it should be actually called the nine-headed invisible dragon from the fifth level of hell. <laughs> more accurately describes what it's doing to our bodies. Um, yeah, so, so stress, stress causes, uh, well, I mean, tons of different health concerns, including headaches, which are, is my sworn duty to destroy all headaches. So, so how, do we, how do we work with stress? Classic combination of points uh, to work with stress are what are called the four gates. So that is large intestine four right there, and it's mirrored point, liver three, which is between the big toe and the middle toe. That is said to help circulate the chi. Now, okay, so how does, that, how does that really work? Well, it works because the hands and feet are actually very high in what are called proprioceptors. Proprioceptors are these nerves that allow us to you know, manipulate things, make sense of where we are in the world. They're also highly reactive to stress. And what is the stress response look like? It looks like this. And people walk around like this and they're like, I don't understand why I have a headache. You know? So we want to first, we want to relax the hands and the feet. That will reduce the overall allostatic load, which is a fancy way of saying stress. But allostatic load is accumulative. So if you can reduce stress in one part of the body, you'll feel it penetrate through your whole being. Other points you might want to add to that are tayan, which is on the temples, and yin tang, which is between the eyebrows. Why? because you're relaxing the facial nerves. And facial nerves are also highly reactive to stress. This is why if you've ever gotten a facial, that's why you feel so relaxed afterwards. You have relaxed the facial nerves and your whole body feels the benefit. So what about musculoskeletal issues? So, um, for example, everybody's walking around with tight shoulders. So you can needle that directly, or you could also needle, in addition to that, UB67, which is right on the corner of the pinky toe. That's a Jing Well point. 
and the points at the end of the channels of the Jing wells are said to clear the channel. So that whole, the whole channel going from the eye, down the head, down the back to the toe will be released. Now again, that might seem like that's a, given that a lot of credit, but it doesn't seem so crazy once you understand fascia. So fascia is, uh, a con is connective tissue. It's a continuous sheath of connective tissue. It surrounds every bone, every muscle, every organ. It allows everything to slide past one another. Unless it gets really tight. And when it gets tight, I'm going to use it on my shirt. If I just pinch here and twist, this whole area is affected. That's what, that's what tight fascia will do. Similarly, if I pull down on my shirt, I don't really feel it down here, but I certainly feel it by my shoulders. And I can pull on my shoulders all I want, but as long as this is being constricted, I'm just gonna tear my shirt. So we wanna put slack into the fascia, and that's what just putting a needle into the foot will do. Now, and what about pain? So, Acupuncture works against pain in a variety of different ways. Actually, reducing the stress, the allostatic load, relaxing the fascia, that will all contribute to reducing pain. But there's also the release of endogenous opioids. So, and they've actually done some similar, there's been some pretty cool tests, actually one was at the University of Michigan recently, where they did brain imaging to find what's going on when acupuncture is applied. So they take real acupuncture, quote unquote, real acupuncture, putting a needle into a point, and they compare that with what's called sham acupuncture. Now sham acupuncture uses uh, like a retractable pen device and to simulate a needle prick. Now from an acupuncturist point of view, that's still acupuncture. You're still stimulating the nerves. In fact, there's a law in, in Western medicine called Hilton's Law that says nerves stimulated at the skin surface penetrate the deeper structures. So it's kind of a it's kind of a messy subject where acupunctures are concerned. But so when they compare the two, the sham acupuncture still reduced pain. The genuine acupuncture seemed to reduce pain for a bit longer. And when they look at the brain imaging, the sham acupuncture has all the opiate receptors they're occupied with the endogenous opioids. But when you look at the real acupuncture, there's actually many more free opiate receptors. They're unoccupied. First it's like, well, how does that make sense? It's actually that there's more opiate receptors being expressed to drink up every last bit of painkiller. So, so I hope it's starting to kind of get the idea that this is actually a deep physical, deeply neurological medicine, uh, which brings us to uh, I want to talk about specifically is how acupuncture can help with stroke and the aftermath of stroke. Um, now, if you look at some studies, it'll show that acupuncture is not very good for stroke. Now, we got to get back to what I said before, the right acupuncture method for the job. In this case, it's, what's called, it's a system called Ju scalp acupuncture. Um, it's a system that's only about 50 years old, which tells you that acupuncture is actually an, evol an evolving medicine. It's not just stuck in the Ming Dynasty. So when you look at studies that say that acupuncture doesn't work for, for a stroke, well, what they're, they're testing are actually many body point, body point systems of acupuncture, like you on the thigh, on the arms, and whatnot. The problem with that is that all these signals are trying to get to the brain, but in stroke, it's the brain that's messed up. So we need a direct way of working with the brain, and because we're using scalp acupuncture, that more or less is a, more, a direct method. Um, Jute scalp acupuncture is what's called a microsystem. That means, similar to reflexology, means that the whole body can be treated from a single body part, in this case, the scalp. And what we do in, um, in jute scalp acupuncture is we, well, first we, clear, we talk about excess deficiency in Chinese medicine. So when a stroke happens, it's kind of like being in an earthquake in Los Angeles. You're sitting there, you're reading a book, and all of a sudden, things are flying off the shelf, glass is breaking, there's cracks in the ceiling. And so you don't want to just, so once the earthquake's gone, you don't want to just sit there and live there. You're going to trip over stuff, and it's going to start getting worse. We want to clear that excess. And the technique in juice scalp acupuncture starts clearing that excess to allow us to make new neural connections. Because what happens if you don't get someone treated 
fairly soon after the stroke, bad habits start to set in. Improper neural connections start to set in. So we want to, we want to start relearning how to move. For example, in a stroke, you, you may not even be able to touch your own nose. So we want to apply the technique and then start, it's not quite physical therapy because we're really working with the brain. So we start guiding the patient how to do this. And very quickly, the new neural connections start to take place. If you can't talk, you're starting to stimulate the throat so the brain gets the message that, you know, oh, that's how you do it. So basically it's kind of being a baby. You gotta relearn how to do all these things. But um, the, the Jusca acupuncture in San Jose, people are flying in from all across the country and all across the world to, to get treated by him. But he, he's only one guy. You know, he's 80, and he's the only guy aside from the Joker to pull off a purple suit. He's, uh, he's a really cool guy. So, uh, so I think it's really important information to get out to people so that if you know somebody anywhere, call the, the Jus Scalp Acupuncture Center in San Jose, find out where a practitioner is near that person, and you know, strokes of color can be a thing of the past. So uh, I think that's my time, and I thank you so much for listening to me. That one. <laughs>